Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part four of our tile-based game project. And in this video, and this is a big one, we're going to be introducing the concept of a scrolling map and the idea of a camera that follows the player. You ready? Let's get started. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to make our map loading a little bit more flexible. Down the road, we're probably going to want to load uh, multiple maps um, have different layouts to our game world, things like that. So I'm going to take this code right here where we load the map file. And I've made a new file called tilemap.py. And I'm going to define a class called map. And we initialize that just by telling it the file name that we want to load. And in there, we're going to put that that code. And instead of loading map.mapdata, we're just going to name that data. So the maps data is that list where we put all of the map tiles. And then this will be the file name. So we load the file name, send it the file name, it opens the file, reads it all in, puts it in self.data. But then I also want to add a couple of properties. Okay, so that we can keep track of how big our map is. I'm going to call this the tile width, and that's how many tiles wide is the map. Well, that's just the length of uh, one of the lines. So if I take line zero, that's how many tiles wide my map is. The tile height is just going to be the length of the list as a whole, right? Because the list is a list of lines. So how many lines is it long? That's the height. We'll also have, we also will probably want to know, and it'll be useful to know, the pixel width of the map. And that's just going to be the tile width times however big our tiles actually are. And height will be the same. And then we won't know what tile size is unless we. import settings all right so there we go that's our new uh, map object to find so over here all we have to do instead of this is we'll open we'll take this file name and we're just going to say self.map equals map with that file name. So we create a new map. So we need to import that. And then here where we go through and read, we're just going to read whatever the maps.data is. And now we are, what did we do? We did not indent properly. There we go. All right. So now we're back to where we were. We're loading our map, and we're a little more flexible. All right. But what if we want to have a map that's bigger than the screen, right? So that we can walk around a larger area. Well, I've made a quick little map two, where I just made a much bigger map, and if in my program I loaded that map to, then we'd only be able to see the corner of it, right? I can't get down to the rest of the map. So what we want to do is we want the screen, we want to scroll when we move across this map. Or another way to look at it is we want the camera to follow the player and move along with him. Now, technically, we don't really have a camera all we have is a game window where we're drawing pixels, right? But it's very convenient to use the term camera to refer to the portion of the map that you're seeing. So that's what we want to do. And so we're going to define a camera object over here. Okay. Now this camera, how is this camera going to work? Well, let's look at a little example. So here's a little demo I mocked up. 
The red rectangle is our screen. That's how big our game window is. And there's our little player in the middle of it. But our map is quite a bit bigger. It's twice as wide and twice as tall as the screen is. And you can see here our player right now is at tile position 16, 12. So he's 16 tiles over and 12 tiles down. So what do we want to do when we move? If I move to the right, I basically want the map to shift to the left, like that. And as I move further, it's shifting further. So you can see how that looks. And if I move up, same, same idea. But we don't want to actually change the coordinates of all these tiles, right? So I'm going to move down a little bit. This tile right here at the edge of the map is at tile position 0, 0 on the map. I don't want that to move, or I don't want that to change. It's still in the same place on the map. All I really want to do is I just want to draw the map shifted by some offset. So see, as I move to the side, I'm just drawing the map six tiles shifted to the left. The player, you can see, stays mapped to a coordinate on the map. So as he gets down, he's getting to the bottom right of the map. His tile position gets bigger. But on the screen, his actual location on the screen hasn't changed. He's still centered on the screen. He's still you know, being drawn at those pixels. So to keep everything consistent, the easiest way to do this, and, and trust me, there are lots of ways to do scrolling cameras, but we're going to try and stick to a, the simple, simplest but most flexible one that we can do um, in our situation. And that's going to be to just keep track of an offset that will be how far to the left or right, up and down, do we want to draw all the objects on the map. And that'll include any mobs we have running around on it, anything like that as well. We just want to shift our drawing over. Okay. Hopefully that explanation made a little bit of sense, and you'll see how it works when we start implementing it. So our camera We're going to just tell it how wide and how tall it needs to be. Okay, so, and we're just going to use a rectangle to track this. Okay, we're just going to use a rectangle to track it. And I'm also going to name those just so they're easy to refer to. We have our camera. Okay. Now our camera is going to need to do two things. It's going to need to shift the drawing rectangle of anything we try and draw, and it's also going to need to update itself to track where the player is. Whenever the player moves, it needs to update whatever that offset is, and that offset is going to be tracked in this rectangle. This rectangle is just going to keep track of how far to the left or right up and down do we need to shift all the drawing. So the apply portion, so applying it to an object, we're just going to send it, and I'm going to call this an ent entity because we might sh send it, you know, a sprite that's running around the screen, a mob, a wall, whatever. Okay, and all it's going to do is it's going to return that entity, that entity will have a rectangle, right, because it's a sprite, and it's going to move that rectangle by whatever our camera coordinates are. This move command, when you apply it to a rect, gives you a new rectangle that's shifted by this amount. So in our example, so in our example program, I'll open up again, when I have moved one square to the right, the offset is now minus 1. Multiply that by 32, and that's how many pixels we're going to shift. So this will be minus 32, so it will move that rectangle's, or that entity's rectangle, 32 pixels to the left for, for it to know where to draw. Okay? And now for our, for our update, 
what we're going to do is we're going to have it follow a sprite, right? which is going to be the player. And we want to update ourselves to follow that sprite. So that means we need to adjust where the x and y of our where the x and y of our camera are going to shift to. Okay, so we want to shift. Remember, we're going in the we need to go in the opposite direction of the player. The player moves to the right, so the offset moves to the left. So we're going to take the minus of the target rec dot x, and we're going to add half the screen size because we want to keep the, the player centered uh, centered on the screen right and the same thing with the other direction type over two and then we just ad adjust what our camera's rectangle is oops pg.rect the rectangle is now going to be that x and y it stays the same size Okay, so there's our camera. That's all we need. So now we need to adjust our game loop to use that camera. So in def new, I'm going to spawn the camera. So we'll call it camera. And it's going to use the map width and map height. So we know how big total play area is that the camera can occupy. And then we're going to go down to our update section. And in the update section, we need to make sure that the camera updates. So we use our update function, and we're going to track the player. And then the last but not least, we need to go down here to draw. Now right now we're saying all sprites.draw, but we need to change that. And in fact, all the all sprites.draw command does is this. It says for sprite in all in all sprites screen.blit sprite.image sprite.rec. That's that's exactly the same thing. This is a sh this is what all sprites.draw is a shortcut for looping through every sprite in the group and blitting it on the screen in the location it's supposed to be. So what we want to do now is instead of blitting it at this location where the rectangle thinks it is, right, where the sprite thinks it is, we want the sprite to continue thinking it's where it is because it's, it's tracking where it is on the map and that's fine. But what we want to do is we want to change this to camera.apply Right? And so we take the camera and we apply it to that sprite. Okay, so now we're ready to test it out. And I just noticed that I made a typo here. Our self.camera is a camera. Problems of talking while you're typing. So we spawn our camera, we update it every loop, and then we're going to draw things using the camera. So let's see what happens. Okay, there we are. Now if I move down, look, my map is scrolling and I can see all the edges. I'm still colliding because the collision code and the sprite movement code and everything doesn't even know about any of this scrolling, right? We didn't change it at all. The coordinates of the rectangles are just they just keep increasing as I move to the right and they and as I move to the left and they think they're still drawn in the original location they were they don't care but I can run around anywhere on the map and all the walls will still be working correctly and that's great but what about this what about all this area out here I'm at the edge of the map now and so we don't have anything here. So what would we draw here? We don't want just a big chunk of empty space, right? What we'd really like to do is have it stop scrolling when, you know, I reached this little thing is in the way. Let's try a different corner. I want it to stop scrolling when I reach, you know, 
know, about right here, right? So I can see the edge of my map, but if I keep going to the right, my player should just move until he hits this wall, but the map doesn't scroll anymore. So we need to set some limits on the scrolling based on the width of the total width of the map. So to do that, let's look at our demo again for a second. So here I am scrolling around. Now let's 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 talk about the left hand side, right? So as I move to the left, the offset is getting closer and closer to zero, right? When I'm right here, the offset is the x offset is zero. So we're just looking at the x right now. And if I take a step to the left, the offset becomes positive one, right? Which is 32 pixels, right? And it keeps getting bigger. So what I want is when I'm over here, I want the offset to keep changing. But when I get here, I want it to stop. So that means the offset, the maximum value the offset can have is zero. Right? I never want it to go into the positive numbers to do the left-hand side. So I can do that by we're going to give a little gap here, and this is going to be limit scrolling to map size. Okay, so we need to set a we need to make sure x is never bigger than zero. We use that we do that by using the min function. Oops. So we're just going to say x is the minimum of whatever 0 or x are. So if x is 1, right, so if we calculated that we should be shifted by 1, 0 is smaller than 1, so x will stay 0. And we can see that. That'll just work for that left-hand side. Now see, I didn't scroll. I can scroll to the right, and the other walls still go past like they were doing before. But now as I'm scrolling to the left, when, I re when the offset reaches 0, it can't go any bigger and I can't go off there. Okay, now on the right hand side, or we can do, let's do the same thing with the bottom since the bottom will be nice and simple. Okay, so this does the left, right? And we do the same thing for uh, y to do the top. Okay, that'll take care of our left and top. Those are easy, okay? But let's talk about the right and the bottom. So if we look at our demo one more time, as I scroll to the right, the offset is getting more and more and more negative. And when I reach right here, which is where I want to stop, my offset is minus 32. Let's 32 tiles. And we know 32 times 32 is 1024. So my offset is now negative 1024. And I don't want it to get any smaller than that. So the minimum that the offset can be is negative 1024. Or in other words, negative the difference between the width of the whole map and the width of the camera, or the, sorry, the width of the screen. So to do that, we're going to go, oops, we're going to go back over here and we're going to set the maximums to these things. The maximum, <clears throat> and remember on that example we just saw, it was negative. So we're going to say negative, whatever the width of the camera is, that's 2048 at the moment, minus the width of the screen, which is 1024. On x, and the same thing with y, where we're going to say the height minus the height of the screen, y. And this one does the right, and this one does the bottom. Okay, and that will do all four sides. So let's go and try it out. Now if I scroll down, I'm going to stop when I reach the bottom. And if I scroll right, I'm going to stop when I reach the right. Uh, but there's a little gap there. And I'm going to talk about why that is in just a second. But go ahead and try this out. So we're scrolling in every direction. We've got limits to 
all four sides and that all looks great. Now why did I get that extra line on the right hand side? Why was that gap there? Well clearly the map thinks it is one tile wider than we think it is. Right? We drew this and it's 64 tiles wide. There's no extra space over here. And why does that work? Well, first time I ever did something like this, I'm embarrassed to say it took me forever to figure it out. It's one of those things where you rack your brain for a while and then when you figure out what it is, um, you feel kind of dumb because it should have been obvious from the start. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, um, if you have already figured it out, well, good for you because <laughs> it took me a while. Um, but that's one of those things where you do more programming, you get more experienced, and you remember to look for things like this. What's happening is when we read the file, we're reading in each line of the file, right? We're looking at each line. Well, each line in a text file, you can't see it, but actually has at the end of it one of those. That is a new line character. That is what tells the computer that when it reads a, a text file, the the next line doesn't. The next characters don't continue off to the side like this. There's a there's a basically an invisible new line character there. But when we read the text file, we read that as well. So we're reading an extra character here that doesn't count. I might as well have a bunch of dots there, right? So what we need to do is when we read our uh, data file we need to strip out those new lines and Python has a command to do that called strip and that will take the line strip away any slash ends or backslash n characters new line characters and they won't be there when it looks at the file and that is why we have that gap there so now that we strip away those ends it's not thinking those are characters that it needs to look at. And now our map scrolling is complete. So hopefully you understood all that explanation. It might be a little abstract the first time around, so um, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i go through it one more time just to review. Uh, we have a camera object, and what that camera object does is it keeps track of how big the whole view area is, the size of the whole map and whenever the player moves it calculates an offset for how much the player has shifted right in the opposite direction that the player has gone so if the player moves to the right a certain amount it's offset to the left by that same amount and we use that to draw everything on the screen right when we draw our objects we draw them shifted by that amount it's important to keep in mind that we do not change any of the properties of the objects, right? So these wall objects, when they're spawned, they know where they are and what their coordinates are in pixels. We never change those. So a wall object that is uh, in the lower right-hand side of the screen is, you know, 2,000 pixels by, you know, 1,500 pixels. And those never change. It always thinks it's staying in the same spot we're just drawing it in a different spot than it thinks it is. And so that all stays the same. And same thing with the player. The player's coordinates are getting bigger and bigger and bigger as it moves right and down, uh, but its pixel coordinates on the screen are what we keep the same, right? So it stays in the middle, um, except when it gets towards the edge, but the pixel coordinates where we draw it are not the same as the pixel coordinates where it thinks it is, right? It thinks it's getting all the way down to the end. And so it's nice to have the camera be totally independent of the objects on the, uh, you know, in the game. They don't have to know the concept of the camera. They just need to know the concept of the map that they're walking around on. The other great thing that this style of camera allows us to do is when we update the camera to figure out what it's offset is we're using the player but we don't have to use the player say the player shot an arrow we could update the camera using that arrow sprite and the camera is going to follow 
the arrow all the way to where it flies to and not follow the player. So we can put any sprite we want in here and the camera will track that sprite. And it also means that we're really flexible in where we spawn the player. Right? If we spawn the player at the beginning of the game, you know, down here, then capital P, then that's where the camera will be when we start the game. Okay, so the player starts out down here, and then he can go wherever he wants to in this direction. So it's very nice, it's very flexible. It's a great way to do, to do uh, a scrolling camera, whether you're doing a tile-based game like this, you're doing some kind of platformer, anything like that. So I recommend you take the time to understand how it works. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. And as always, please pr press the like button and subscribe so you can see the next video when it comes out. And I will see you next time.